welcome everyone. Uh, we are going to open this session up with a beautiful song called My Life is Not My Own. And it's a prayer to Jesus. So. Yeah. 
is not my own. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. Thank you guys. That's beautiful. Welcome back everybody to our final session of Undoing the Doer. We'll let Mexico shift gears. And I just thought I could um, open up this morning with a poem actually that Sabine wrote. She said she was watching yesterday with the movie and um, had some kind of a mystical experience. and. She basically wrote that, I saw colors and shapes in front of my eyes, mainly one eye, although I was perfectly able to continue watching the film. And I thought this was really fascinating to me because last night after, the, uh, after everything, about midnight, I still hadn't gone to sleep. And I started watching this episode called The Man with the Most Amazing Brain. So I thought that was a nice synchronicity after watching Lucy. And they did this half an hour documentary on him and basically he can answer any math question or do whatever, but it's not through calculation. He doesn't go into his mind and think. He said he just closes his mind with whatever anybody catches, asks him, including 20, 30 decimal points of pi or whatever. Actually, maybe two or 3,000 decimal points. So he just goes in and he sees these numbers just go through his mind and he trusts the number that comes to him and says it. And he can tell which numbers are from the spirit and which ones are from the ego that, ex that comes to him because of practice. And he can answer any math question. And in fact, you'll love this, Fava, is in order to test him, he said he can learn pretty much any language in a week. He, they said, okay, we're going to test him. So they flew him to Iceland, which apparently is the world's hardest language, and they even take pride in the language, they said on this thing, that almost nobody can learn it if they weren't born there. They said, so for someone to learn it in a week was crazy. And this guy, he's so humble, he doesn't boast about his skills, but he said, okay, you know, so he went over there, and the lady that was teaching him thought, this is absolutely crazy. So for the week, she's just talking in Icelandic, and he's just absorbing everything. They put him on live television, Icelandic television, to test him out. And they're filming this thing and the two guys are asking him these questions and he's having this fluent conversation because he's just speaking from the words that are being presented to him in his mind with total trust that they're the right thing to say. And he has this beautiful conversation and everybody in Iceland and, and everyone is amazed. And I'm like, this is, what, this is our whole undoing the doer <laughs> retreat. <laughs> Talk about just stepping back from thinking you know and, and doing what's given. And, and then Sabine wrote a poem, I think. Can I read your poem, Sabine? Oh, okay. It's from this book, so I just thought they're going to give me the thumbs up when Mexico's ready, so I'll just I'll read it. She said, this morning I used two books as an oracle. I randomly opened these books. The Gifts of God by Helen Schuckman. No one can rob infinity. For when something is taken, angels join their wings and close the space so rapidly it seems to be illusion, unoccurred, undone. No one can take away from everything. Its very wholeness is a guarantee it is complete forever. There can be no loss left unrestored before it comes. No one can lessen love. It is itself the great restorer. It can but return all that is taken to itself. It knows no loss, no limit, and no lessening. Heaven can only give. This is the sign that losing is impossible. It seemed that it was gone. Yes, angels quickly came and promised 
they would bring it back to you. And Sabine just wrote, I was struck by the beauty of this poem and how well it answered all my concerns. So we may open up to some more insights and questions, but uh, we have a big panel down there in Mexico, so I'll, I'll shoot this down to Mexico and let's have some fun today. Thank you, everybody. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, we're all here. We're all here and standing by and, and uh, wow, it's been a very deep, profound weekend. And yet, um, in contrast to the movie yesterday, Lucy, which was like high speed, zoom, zoom, zoom into God, we're going to slow the pace down, turn the dial down uh, to, the, to a very slow, gentle, uh, almost like an integration of what we experience, because uh, Lucy gives us a demonstration of of what is possible. So it kind of sets the bar very high. Or if this is Calypso, she put the bar very low, and we're all trying to wiggle under <laughs> under that bar. Like, wow, that is amazing. But I have to say, you know, for me, even with all these years and decades of doing this. Back in the early days, you know, we didn't have cell phones, and I didn't use email, and I mean, I, I was just out on the road with uh, maps, paper maps, and uh, putting coins in phone booths. Some of you probably don't even know what a phone booth is. Some of you do. But, uh, you know, and now here we are digitally joining like this, uh, and it's such a spectacular connection, but I have to say that the, this is quite unusual. This is kind of more at the tail end for me of, of doing it this way when actually it has, I've had so many heart-to-heart -heart joinings. I probably have been in some of your living rooms and kitchens uh, sipping a tea or a coffee with you or going out to a restaurant or I see Roberto down there uh, just having a nice chat in traffic in Sao Paulo, traffic, just loving everything and just rejoicing in just the friendship and the the love and the fellowship and yeah and and that's pretty much been my path if if somebody made a a little montage of my journey like my dinner with Andre was basically two guys sitting at a at a restaurant table if you've ever seen that movie mine has been at many restaurant tables many living rooms and dining rooms and it's just all the love is shared so strong because we have nowhere else to go, nothing else to do. We're just enjoying the moment, enjoying the, the love and the friendship and the, and the laughter and the joy together. And that's really all that it's about. It's not about theories and theologies. And I see John there. John, I think, had one of the most profound things yesterday when John said, I'm just going to go at my own pace. And I could hear Jesus saying, you know, and right you are. That's exactly how it works. Uh, Jesus is just like a way shower that is pointing us in the right direction, but he can't make our decisions for us. All he can do is guide us and instruct us. And, and when we're ready, and when we do it at our pace, is exactly uh, what John said. That's exactly right. Uh, there's, there's no rush. Jesus is basically saying, I call to you, uh, I stand at the gates, and... Uh, and, and I'm, going to, I'm with you always. And, uh, and basically, he says that in the Course, the door cannot be shut. And, and, and I live forever. You know? And so basically, there's this eternal invitation. And he's basically saying, come when you're ready. Uh, just come when you're ready. I'll keep calling, and I'll keep loving you and extending this love. But you just come when you're ready. And, and that's exactly what we're doing. And that washes away the resistance, and it washes away the anger, and then it comes back to that simple love. We're just here to be loving, friendly, respectful, honoring, uh, really seeing the graciousness, you know, letting the tears well up when we are overwhelmed with, with gratitude and love, and letting ourselves cry when we feel an unspeakable love coming. And so today is basically dedicated to you, as we often do in these last sessions. Um, I think we're all curious to, to hear how your reactions were to, 
to the movie, to, to the things that have been shared, the different parables that have been shared of where we were and, and what happened and how we started opening up, whether, like uh, Emily was saying, starting off kind of depressed and then all of a sudden this has cracked things wide open. Kristen saying, working in a cubicle, we heard from Suava, you know, just there with her twin boys and picking up the course in her third <laughs> language and then and praying, help me Jesus, I'm down on my knees. And, and Jason has shared, and you've heard the music, but we really want to hear from you. We want to hear what your experiences are and we want to hear your miracles. And if you have curiosities, like, wow, I, I would like to go into that merge like Lucy did, where she just merged into the light, but, but here's what I'm dealing with right now. Here's, practically speaking, what I'm dealing with. And can we do it, roll it back, David, and take it slow like you did with Suava. Roll it back, let's take it nice and slow so I can really take a look at this. If I have a fear or a resistance, I want to really slow it down. Because the love is the same. The, the, that immense love is right here, uh, like Jason was saying, even with this man who goes to Iceland, doesn't know Icelandic, and just absorbs, you know, for a week, and then goes on and speaks fluent Icelandic, just because of being in the moment. You might say, he was done through in Icelandic. <laughs> and that is a great demonstration that you don't have to learn anything, you just have to be willing to be open and then let, let the Spirit do it through you. And what a great example, Jason, that's, that's, uh, that's a classic <laughs> example of being done through. It reminded me a bit of Yogananda. I, I love Paramahansa Yogananda and I, I loved reading his book and, and I actually liked the part where he was told by his guru to go out and teach and share and he's sent to a country where he doesn't speak the language and he gets up in front and, and sits down in front of all these people and he doesn't speak the language and he's no translator or anything and then he just is like praying to his guru like, okay, I did what you said and he just calls upon his guru and boom, the whole talk comes out in the language of the people. He channels the whole talk in a language that he doesn't even speak and doesn't even know. So. It's taking that example you just gave and taking an amazing master like Yogananda and saying, well, that's, that's what's possible if you give it over to God. You, you don't even need to speak the language. In my case, you know, I went to Argentina the first time. I got 14 translators and I, I like that way too because I get to hug them and we're always hugging and having tacos or empanadas and laughing in the car and, and I, I quite like all the uh, interactions of the hugs and being with people and laughing together. But it just shows all of us that whether you've come to one of our conferences or festivals and you felt all those hugs and, and laughed along with us or whether we're just doing it digitally, it's really all the same anyway. But we, w we would love to hear from you because we're all here. And if you have been touched by somebody that spoke during the weekend and you really relate to their, their parable or story or example, but you want a little further clarification, you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm in a, working in a cubicle <laughs> like Kristen was, and I, I would like to get out of that cubicle, actually. Uh, or, you know, I wasn't feeling well, or I was a single mother, or, you know, I, I was going through these perfectionistic or uh, struggles in my mind, then just ask anyone on the panel uh, about that because we're, that's why we're here. We're here to let it come through in a way that's most helpful to you in your perception of the world. And that's how gentle the Holy Spirit is. So, Jeff, why don't you see if we have any hands up and that's going to mostly be our, our beautiful session today. Yeah, lots of hands up. Um, first up is uh, Sylvia. Go ahead, Sylvia. <laughs> uh, first, I'd like to thank you, Jason, for looking straight up into the camera sometimes because somehow I can feel it. Oh, now I can see myself. Ah. <laughs> oh, <I can> see <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what to say. I just, I want to say something to Swava. Uh, I was there um, um, when she was in school in Holland, the, the five-day retreat. And um, we, we sat down the, the, la, the final breakfast and we, we spoke about what happened. I was so jealous at that time. And I felt it again. In a different way, because now I can also, maybe I've also felt love that time. I don't remember. But now I also felt love for you. It's great what happened to you. And I think, well, fuck, I'm, I'm busy long time before you. And I'm still not there. I just, I don't know. I... Um, It came to me at that time that I'm so afraid of the light. There was a parent, um, it came through uh, um, while talking to you. I'm sorry, I'm so nervous. I... <sighs> I'm just shut down somehow. I, when Jason asked yesterday, Are you willing to, to say yes? No, I'm not willing to say I am willing to say yes, but I'm, I'm so scared. And the, in December was the first time I, uh, I joined this, uh, this Zoom meeting thing. And there was, um, there was spoken about taking the leap, jumping in. I don't know how to. I just don't know. I don't know how to give over. I just keep trying to have control. I know I don't have control, but somehow I just try to keep having this control. And I'm just sitting at home doing nothing, trying to read the course, trying to do the lessons, trying to be spiritual. I'm trying to do my best, but I'm doing too much. I don't know how to stop. We, you, you, you all spoke about it this weekend, but somehow my head's going like, I don't know, I don't know how. Maybe that's enough. I just thank you, Suava, for, for also hugging me the, 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 the weekend, the, the Sunday you were with uh, Lisa and Frank and David, of course, and Neda. And you came um, down the stairs. Oh, no, you, you walked to the stairs. And the first thing you said, ah, it was so lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. That, that's, I don't know. Thank you so much for sharing. This is so precious, speaking up and sharing your feelings. And this is, this is a huge step. And I really, I really feel your heart. And I just love you so, so much. And uh, yeah, I, I just want to, I just want to keep you in my heart and, and bring you with me to the light and to remember who you are because you are just, You are just the holy son of God. You are so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Okay, next up is uh, Miss Teresa. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you all. I've had a breakthrough this weekend and I feel uh, like Sylvia. I thank her for sharing. Lately, I've been doing this thing where I say, Holy Spirit, I'm going to smoke this cigarette knowing that I'm choosing it over God, over the love of God. It's, an, it's a misguided miracle impulse and whatever benefits I think I get from it, I punish myself because I know I'm choosing it over God. Please take that and take my desire for anything other than God. 
And I have to be honest, I just realize it's not just smoking, it's everything. I don't want the peace of God. It, it's really come to me. I obviously don't want it. Now, I've been doing the course for a long time, and I've had a lot of breakthroughs and miracles. Um, but it really just slaps me in the face how much I really just want to be right. I want to know that this world I made is the is real. Um, and I was just feeling actually kind of disgusted and disgusting and angry with myself and stupid because <sighs> why would I do that? Why would I still be so afraid to join? And um, after all these years of, of doing this, and I mean, I do the course every day. Every second, you know, oh, gee, Holy Spirit, I just flipped that guy off for cutting me off. I must believe I'm a body that can be hurt. Please take that belief. Oh, you know, I mean, every second I'm, I'm working on this and I'm here um, on this retreat and I've been here for months. But I obviously still don't really want to join. Um, and I was really feeling terrible about that. And yesterday when Jason asked us to, you know. Did we get a message? My message was, love yourself. Well, how do I love myself? I let, do I be nice and let myself have more ice cream? Or do I not have ice cream? Because that's not very loving. And I realized it's not that self that I'm to love. And that self that I should love is that little willingness that I do have. That's the self. And, I'm, and that is what God never let me lose. And that is what saves me. And I just had this big breakthrough. And I don't know if I'm making any sense, but um, I'm going to focus on the, my true self and that little willingness that's always there. But I guess I'm wondering, um, right now I'm feeling okay. But if that not wanting to join um, is upsetting to me. And I don't know how to get over that very well. I mean, I'm just being straight up honest. I'd like to say, no, I want the love of God, but obviously I don't. So I'm just wondering, right now I'm okay, but is there something I'm missing um, to help me get past that? And I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Yeah, it's, it's almost like when we were in Cub Scouts and... Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, some of us, and they said, go out in the woods and rub some sticks together and start a fire. And uh, such joy we had when we actually had a spark. <laughs> we were like, oh my God, it's a spark. <laughs> and that's what I think you're doing with your little willingness. You're, you're saying, I'm going to nurture that spark. I'm going to nurture it. I'm not going to just throw the sticks away or or walk off in a huff, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give myself the permission to, to move those sticks. And when that spark appears, I'm going to nurture it. You know how you bring the kindling and how carefully you have to nurture that tiny little flame before it actually grows into a fire. And that, that's what was coming to mind when you were speaking. I was like, good for you. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Nurture the spark. You're worth it. You are so worth it. And we're all there with you. I've had so many miracles. You know, Svava's um, song about the colors, it's basically saying we, we kind of don't really know what we're going for. We have no clue what's really there. But when you get when you have the miracles, you, you have glimpses. And I've just been upset with myself because I've had so much peace. My, the, you know, the, my happy dream is, is becoming, you know. Um, why would I still refuse it? Like, it's not like I don't know what I'm going for. I've had, I'm not new to this, and yet I would still push it away. So if you, uh, well, anyway, I'll I let you speak. <laughs> David might have something, but I've, I've had a thought since you first started speaking. Well, for you and, and Sylvia, I believe, the lady before, because I feel like David, I feel like that's why he opened up this whole session today in that way because yeah we did Lucy and it was like just even get in touch with where you even feel you're at in terms of readiness but 
Jesus can deal with absolutely anything, even you not knowing. And he actually he prefers that you don't know where you're actually at. He just, he just prefers you cultivate that little willingness. So both of you, when you reach that point that you're describing, it's like, that's the only answer. There's even a song um, I was used to listen to and didn't fully like it because I was like going to go for it. But I just really appreciate it and love it now. It's be gentle with yourself. And there's a line in there. It says, I will only go as fast as the slowest part of me is willing to go. <laughs> and I was like, wow, now that is gentle. Like, that means any resistance whatsoever has to be like acknowledged and just seen and let it be moved through and not fight against it. And if you find resistance high and dedication weak, do not fight yourself. Like that, that is the lesson. And that in itself brings you into this like infinite patience brings immediate results. It's so contrary to the push that we're used to in the world with, come on, you can do it. You can't do this. You know, that's why we're undoing the doer. So, so yeah, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, Roberto just messaged me and said his microphone's fixed, so we'll give him a try. Go ahead, Roberto. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> All right, good. So uh, we are always a little bit hesitant to uh, to speak, but uh, I have a, this strong feeling in my heart, so I'm going to say it. Listen, uh, we did uh, together, David, uh, this is the most beautiful seminar I've ever participated in here in Brazil, was, was a mixture of uh, presidential people, like uh, 80 or 90 people, uh, present uh, in, in the in the in the in the, in the middle of the movie, and I also like I had uh, eighty or ninety people online here for four days. I uh, was being translated and everything else, and I was introduced to Svava. Okay, so I was so surprised because you know David is married now to Svava. Who the hell is Svava for Christ's sake? So we 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 didn't know. Huh? So. We didn't know, and, and we were curious about uh, who was her, and, and and this marriage that happened so quickly, right? So so David must have felt something, uh, and 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 then and, and Vava, of course, she told us what she felt and her story and everything. And yesterday, uh, uh, I felt, and I I wrote, I, I read. Everything that everybody else uh, uh, you know, wrote when Vava was talking, and and the answer was right there, okay? Because that was the mission of Vava, okay? So she told her story, which is my story. I also was internationalized like uh, four or five times. I I had uh, all kinds of diagnostics. I I went through all kinds of things. I started my my spiritual life when I was uh, 46. So it was way, way uh, you know, uh, down the road, and, and uh, that's where uh, I started to feel better. But, you know, the, the, the reason why I'm speaking now is because it's Vava's story, uh, if, if you look at it, it, it says, it's the love, you know, bother. Don't bother about anything else. It's not bother about the resistance that you have about the love, or when when we are trying to do things in this life, which we need to make money. So when we make money, when we have a career, what do we do? We 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 do everything else we, that 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 is different from what you know uh, you know what has been said. You know we we. We, uh, we try to concentrate in ourselves, and ourselves, you know, the, the ego self cannot do anything. So when, when we're trying to make money, we are, you know, going way out, you know, of what we are supposed to do, which is to forgive and to, and to release, okay? So when, what do we need to do then in this life? Because, you know, uh, uh, you know Buddha, like 2,500 years, he said, the 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 biggest problem that that the humanity has is ignorance, and we now have 
8 billion people that we are completely ignorant because we don't know what the heck what he's talking about here and what's the purpose that, that we are here. And Zvava explained to us very clearly this purpose for us to be here. And the purpose for us to be here is to vibrate in love. And if we vibrate in love and we don't try to do the ego things, then she was cured of everything she, she felt before. She was, uh, you know, he covered, you know, all the, her uh, strength. Uh, she composed 40, uh, you know, musics last year. So, Bob, I love you so much that you cannot believe it, you know, because you are my story and uh, everybody's story. And you made it simple, okay? You made it very simple. It's about the love. So if we vibrate to the law, then, then we have it all solved. So that's why you are with David, because you are such a big example that what, what we need to do. And David is supporting you, like Christ, that is supporting you and saying, no, yes, you're okay. You, you come with me. You, you're vibrating love and you're going to be okay. So you <laughs> are just a huge example that is solving what Buddha said, 2,500 years ago, you are solving the ignorance of everybody else. It's going to take years and years and years for everybody to understand that, but it is the truth. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Roberto. Thank you, Roberto. <laughs> I, I do love you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I don't think it's going to be that long, because the world, the billions in the world, no one can resist your face. I know people in Brazil, they see that face and they go, I, when Roberto asks me something, I am powerless to refuse. So I think the whole human race, the, if they see this video of you and your face, that will collapse thousands of years because the, the billions will not be able to remain ignorant when they see the sincerity on your face. So thank you. We feel it. We feel you have a huge heart. Huge, huge heart. Uh. Just uh, like to say yeah. yeah, Sylvia, I, ju I just can't get you out of my mind, actually. I'm just so grateful for, for your sharing. And I just feel like, yeah, when you said that um, you need to stop doing, just what was in my mind was that Jesus has a plan for you, and I feel like you're on, just on the brink of it. Like the way you shared with that transparency and authenticity. I just like had tears in my eyes and I feel like that openness and vulnerability is what the spirit wants to use. And just even being so in touch with, I have a no, I, 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 you know, there's control there, but so authentically in touch with it, I feel like you're just on the cusp of the other side because you're being so honest. And I just feel like Jesus has a special function for you and you're a miracle worker. And just to put that prayer out, like, Jesus, I'm, I'm ready, I'm here. How would you use me? So it's not even about not doing, but it's just that repurposing. And I, I just trust that Jesus will use you in a way that will wash away that control and wash away that no. And it's not something you have to personally do, but just being like, being like, Jesus, use me. My heart's open. And, and I feel like that's what you're calling for. So, yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, next up is um, Helena. Go ahead, Helena. So good to be here with you, Slava. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, it is very inspiring. And there was a little thought in my mind like, oh, why doesn't that happen for me? Or, you know, wanting that. And um, and I know that's the ego, the, the lack that's coming up whenever I I see witnesses or parables of others who experience maybe Jesus in a loud way or a very direct way um and yet i have had that direct um experience as well and then i have to remember that it comes in different ways sometimes it's not such a loud voice 
sometimes it's a feeling or the body just does something so that that's comforting to know that it can, you know, Jesus uses me in different ways. Um, but what I wanted to bring up was patterns. Um, sorry, I'm nervous and I don't really know what my question is, but it's what's present in my life. And I keep looping in this pattern and I'm emotional about it. So just bear with me. It's the, my relationship with my husband. And while there's many breakthroughs and miracles in my relationship, um, and there's times where I feel the support, there are times when I don't. And um, I start to question whether this relationship is supporting my expansion and awakening. That seems to be the pattern. So I think it's a bit confusing because there are times where it's good. And then there are times when it feels like very explosive, like in particular, um, I haven't felt the impulse for sex and there's been a lot of healing for me in that area. And I feel like Jesus has purified a lot of that for me. Um, but recently it just hasn't been there. It's been like more of a call to go in. So there's been more meditation, um, going to bed early. And the message I got <clears throat> when you asked that question was, I thought it was going to be about the relationship but actually the message I got was uh, to go into ministry with Lisa, who I've been working as a mighty companion with here. As a me She's just been helping me and mentoring me and supporting me. And so the message was to go into collaboration with her. And, and there's this sense of like where I'm headed this year, a deeper devotion um, and this collaboration with Lisa and extending is that too. It's just a deeper uh, commitment to being done through. That is my prayer this year is just to be fully, just a full yes. And so that's clearly like the guidance right now. And there's this fear that that, yeah, the relationship will fall apart. Because there's, when I, when I pull out, and it was interesting to see Lucy, like, when she was firm and she was on her mission or she was following guidance or whatever, she wasn't necessarily soft and sweet. And so it seems like when I'm, when I'm sort of not in that impulse of affection or sex, it's, it's almost like the ego judges it. Like you're not being loving or you're not, you know, there's, there's, I guess, doubt thoughts that come in, but it was helpful to see Lucy almost like very, almost unemotional. And that's sometimes how it feels like that. I'm not like feeding or kind of that need he has a high need for me and for affection, like, and so that's not necessarily being fed. And there's so much rage and anger and it's hard like to weather this storm. And I think my tendency is to sort of perhaps go back into the pattern to alleviate this rage that starts to come out when I don't respond in a typical relationship way or I don't, I'm not there. And yeah, so I'm just curious about this pattern. I, you know, I think a part of me does the condition like place a requirement like on Jesus. Like if, if you do want me to leave this relationship, then I really need a loud like Svava had a really strong message. Like I, I feel like I would need it to be something quite um, 
certain, like very obvious and strong for me. And it's not like I'm getting that. So yeah, I guess my question is about the patterning and do I just, I guess I follow the guidance. Maybe I'm answering my own question. It's just hard. Like today's lesson is I'm upset because I see something that's not there. And it's like, it feels like it's there. Like it feels like there's this rage tornado in my home. And I don't want to be in that. Like, honestly, I do want an environment of peace. And like community feels so desirable to me because, or maybe there is rage coming up there too. I don't know. But it seems like a place of peace. And it's just hard to be in the storm of this ego rage yeah and sometimes it plays out with the kids but it's just hard for me sometimes to be in this environment and I don't know any words or thoughts that might be helpful like I think of leaving but I'm also very afraid to walk away Mm, thank you, Helen. Yeah, it feels like you did hear the guidance, and it was to collaborate with Lisa, and and, uh, and this is Lisa Windsor, I think, uh, up there. And, and I remember Jeff, her coming to your house time and time again. She even brought her husband at one point, um, but she just had such a passion to really go for it. Also with, with a group of children, uh, like yourself with a group of young children. This was maybe, I don't know how many years ago, Jeff might know, uh, 10, 12 or more years ago. And, um, and so I feel like you are getting the prompt for the collaboration and, and your story and what you're describing here is, is very common of spiritual awakening because uh, when human, the human being itself is a projection of the ego, the desire to make a self apart from God, apart from spirit. And so human beings are, if you could talk about them, they're like packages of, of wants and needs. And there's packages in relationships of expectations, of fulfilling roles, fulfilling the wife role. And the whole balance of the, of the relationship is based on those wants and needs and getting needs met, it's almost like there's a, 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 an agreement and so forth. And then when you get a calling from Jesus, it's like Jesus saying, I'm calling you out of the world. And the kind of things you're describing, we talk about and I've talked about for decades where the, the desire for sexuality can go away, the desire to sink into meditations, the desire for spiritual community, Yogananda has Ananda communities all over the world, even though he's passed away now. And there are, and they're very devotional communities like the one we have. And so these aren't even strange anymore. They're, they're more people, even young people, millennials, are are banding together instead of wanting to live in all by themselves in an apartment. They're willing to pay more to live in co-ops and places where they have shared interests and they can talk with people and relate. Uh, so a lot of the things you're feeling are are very, very common. And I think of the David in the Bible, the Psalms, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That takes a lot of mind training to shall not want, you know. And you're simply following the course where you're turning, let thine eye be single. You're turning your desire to know God. That's beautiful. You're turning your desire to be happiness. I've even heard people say, well, you have to let go of the desire to be happy. And eventually, once you come back to oneness, then you're in a state of desirelessness. But, but the step toward it from separation back to oneness is to desire to be happy. And you have to let go of so much conditioning and so many beliefs, including meeting other people's needs, which is a lot of what people-pleasing is. Uh, uh, including keeping the equation going in interpersonal relationships. And, and I have to say, I know you had a very deep connection with Jeffrey, Thomas, Thomas in our community, and with Jason and myself. And, and actually, uh, Suzanne Sullivan, you know, was, was going through this uh, a lot of years ago. We were, Jason and I were sitting out 
by a, a river in the canyon there, and she was talking on about her husband and Chris and going on and on and on. And, and um, I think it, she was talking about how wonderful he was, and she went on and on and on and on. And he gives me this, and he does, gives me that. He gives me this, he provides me that, he gives me this, he provides me this. She went on and on for like t 10 minutes, and I just had one question. I said, or a statement, I just said, well, that's fascinating that, that one person can provide and meet all your needs. <laughs> I said, that, that's fascinating. I can't believe that one person can meet all your needs. And then Jason can pick up the story because then Jason asked her a question, and her whole world started to unravel when Jason ask her one question. She went from married and living out in the canyon and kind of practicing the course in a conceptual way to one question from Jason. It's like it just started the dominoes moving and it started a dismantling and an undoing, taking her deeper down into her true prayer, which is the heart of God, and dismantling her whole world, everything, absolutely everything in her world, just completely was dismantled. So I let Jason pick up the parable from there. What did you say to her, Jason? What was that one line by the river that, that just uh, absolutely devastated the self-concept of Suzanne Sullivan? And now she's, she's in a 21-day silent retreat just communing with Christ and, and glowing. And, you know, she's in the, in the winter in Utah. But what, what was it that you said to her that started this whole thing? <laughs> Does he help you with the awakening of your mind? Does he help you with the healing of your mind? And she was like, oh, that's not a fair question. <laughs> of, like the answer was so obvious. Of course he doesn't. I didn't know I had to, I didn't know I had to even let that question in. But to me at that point, since it's all about a shared purpose, right? You're either sharing in the purpose of waking up or you're sharing the purpose of keeping the world together. And I had joined community, it was like, well, that, that's a minimum. And so when she let that question come in into her mind, she, it was like just being honest that she couldn't just have him there. Like David asked her the first question. He was like Thor. He, David called him Thor, where he would, he actually ended up getting a hernia from like shoveling the snow by himself. What, what we do as a community now with maybe 10 to 20 people up there, he did all himself, you know, building and, and fixing the rows and roads and wires and everything like that. And, and she just thought that she could just let him continue to do that while she sat in her chair and meditated. But the gap was getting so big when that question came in, does he help you with your awakening? All of a sudden she saw him the way David was seeing, that kind of there was a misuse actually underneath. And when she accepted that and let him go, it was really hard. Um, it was kind of amazing, actually. She has an amazing parable with this because you probably know it. She, she went for it. She just let it all go. And yeah, you know, she thought she was really close. And actually, a lot of rage did come up for her and anger. And she was cleaning the cat litter at the peace house. Like, this is what I left everything for, you know, it was, but it was starting over instead of being like, a queen in the world at the top of this retreat center, it was, okay, I'm willing to do whatever you would have me do. And what happened was we, you know, we had some people donate some funds to help pay off his portion. He was really upset at first. He was really angry. But when he accepted it, he ended up going and getting his teeth fixed in Mexico. He ended up meeting this woman that was the daughter of a multi-billionaire so he is like he gets to travel the world he's living in all these really nice homes everything that they were working hard to do and she was keeping him around so they could go do he ended up getting she got exactly what she wanted like David said in the silent retreat but it was all of this personal responsibility herself for her own awakening so yeah when she just gave it over it's really a great story of everybody wins everybody and he got his hernia fixed. <laughs> and this, this is actually where the trust comes in, because I know people who study the Course for years, they'll say, well, David, you know, the, the Course is teaching there, there is no, no one you cannot learn from because there's no one that you cannot teach. And, and 
he does put in there the levels of teaching and all kinds of different metaphors, but, but in the end, it's like you have to let go of trying to control the script. And where most human beings get into problems is that, is that they have a construct, a self-concept, that they're really not willing to give over to Christ or the Holy Spirit. Basically, it's a construct that they believe is, is actually the best, and it's who they are, and they'll do anything to fight and defend it. And um, there's one point near the, the rules for decision where Jesus says, you have no control over the world you made. And now we're getting back to the core authority issue of who's in charge of the awakening. Is it the ego or is it the Holy Spirit? The ego would like to believe that it's even in charge of the spiritual awakening. Like it can control the relationships it has, it can decide which book it's going to read, it can decide whether it's going to be Course in Miracles or Infinite Way or science, uh, uh, Christian Science or uh, Yogananda or whatever. And then you read in the Course that, that the curriculum, which is forgiveness, is required. Only the time you take it is voluntary. And then when you get back into the Manual for Teachers, Jesus comes right, right out and says, you don't even get to decide the form of the curriculum. That's when people start throwing the book. It's like, wait a minute, you told me that this was just one path. This was one path of many. Don't I get to decide the form of my curriculum? And Jesus says in the, in the Manual for Teachers, no, you don't. You don't even get to decide that. So when you hear Svava's story, or you hear my story, or you hear the story of many saints and mystics, basically what happens is it's almost like a falling down on your knees in knowing that you're worth it. You're, you are completely worth that happiness and that peace and joy. So when you fall on your knees and you ask for help, it's not falling on your knees in unworthiness. You're falling on your knees in, in worthiness. You are a perfect child of God. You deserve happiness. You deserve joy. You deserve infinite peace. And you are completely worthy of that. And Jesus even says, beware of the shabby belief that neither you or anyone else is worth consistent effort. You know it's going to take some willingness and some effort, but you, you know you're worthy of it. So when you fall on your knees, basically you're basically giving the whole script, you're giving all the symbols of the world and this is what people do when they, to wake up. You can't bring God into the illusion. You can't say, God, you spiritualize Danny and you spiritualize my three boys and come on, I, I want you to do the hocus pocus on them and make them the sweetest, kindest, most loving thing so we can be the sweetest, kindest, loving family on the planet. It doesn't work that way to bring the truth into the illusion. What you really do is when you're down on your knees, you're saying, I will follow. I will follow your instructions. And when you, Jason asked you to, to make that prayer, you heard, you did hear the answer. It wasn't the ego speaking. It was collaboration. And also you're collaborating, interestingly enough, the Holy Spirit has you collaborating with a woman who has young children, who's very passionate and devoted to God, and is very similar to, to your story. You can relate to her. You can, you can both uh, support and nurture each other. And this is how holy relationship grows stronger. It's through our purpose. It's through our function. Are you neglecting your children? Are you neglecting your husband? Well, neglect will be something that the ego will try to use to stop you from following your calling because neglect always involves guilt. And, and if those attack thoughts of neglect and everything come in and you cave into them and you give into them and you believe them, then the ego in, in that sense is winning in the sense that it wants you to feel guilty. It doesn't want you to feel innocent and pure. And we have worked with so many people that are unwinding from many, many different seeming scenarios and situations, but it's just really unwinding from the ego belief system. It's not, it's not about leaving behind persons. It's not about leaving behind specific situations. It's more the prayer is, use it, let it, you bring the witnesses. 
Holy Spirit, Jesus, you bring the relationships that I'll heal. I'm not going to try to control what the relationships are, and I'm not even going to try to maintain them because my best attempts at maintaining relationships have always resulted in difficulty or struggle or even sometimes the perception of failure. So people really need to understand that, that when you are praying for healing, you're praying for the healing of your mind, you're praying for the healing of perception, and that means that the Holy Spirit needs to reconfigure, or he even says straighten out perception. It's very distorted, it's very twisted, it's very special, it's very locked in and controlled, and, and Jesus wants it to be free-flowing. So that as you join with Lisa, you know, you can do that in, in faith and trust, that you will be used in a very broad way to expand your perception. You're not trying to lock down and, and somehow protect or serve or maintain specialness. You are actually opening your mind up to be used to come to agape love, unconditional love, loving everyone you see, everyone you think of even in your mind. You have this love for, this devotion for. And so we're just really here to kind of cheer you on. And, and of course, you're describing what everybody goes through when, when you give yourself over to spirit. You're really giving over the future. I know that was what I felt when, when I had that experience back, I think I was just getting into course groups in the early 1980s and I had this real almost conversion experience where I just really sincerely gave everything over to Christ and said, you lead me, you guide me, you direct me from this point. I could feel the fear in the background was, wait a minute, you had a future, you had plans, you had, you had ambitions, all these things, and the ego was like, you're going to give up all this? It was like Jesus being tempted in the 40 days in the desert. You know, are you going to give all that up? You've got some good things going here. Are you going to give it all up for this Christ thing? And in the end it was, yes I am. I will give all that up for this Christ thing. I, I had to be quite firm with the ego, like I am not interested at all in what you're trying to offer me. I am not interested at all. Like that Cliff Richards song, you know, came a time in my life I had to be free from all of the lies that used to be me. You know, I, I really felt that, like I, I'm going to go for this and let the chips fall where they may, really. And I have to say that's the most important thing. We can't control the script. We, we can't control who Christ brings into our lives. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, knows what, who we need to meet to heal. And we can't just say, well, here's the way my life looks. Now you spiritualize this. You, you really make these people Spiritualize. I want three little angel boys. I don't want any screaming at mom anymore, no pointing of fingers, no throwing food. I want angel boys, choir boys, and I want Danny to be a choir boy too. And, and I want him to let me meditate when I want to meditate and let me do the things that are important to me. But Jesus doesn't come in and spiritualize the people around us. It's by following the guidance and the joy and the inspirations then the characters start to show up, and then they come at you from everywhere. Loving, 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 loving. And, and you see the difference between trying to, you know, change a construct to, I give you my mind to change the purpose from hatred to love, and then, then I'll let you bring the witnesses. And it's a big difference. The, those two ways are not the same. And we're, we're with you. You know, you're, you're one of us, so you're in our community, whether it's digitally or whether we visit you, and we just leave it up to the Holy Spirit to, to bring the, the fullness of the joy. And so we're, we're totally with you. We love you so dearly. We just feel you. I love you, Helena, so much. Yeah, love mm. you. Oh. 
Next up is um, Sharon. Go ahead, Sharon. Oh, my. Um, wow. Well, I sure have a lot. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I sure have a lot of things flying around my um, brain here. But um, this topic of undoing the doer is, um, you know, is where I am and where I've actually been for a few years that I'm aware of. Um, I've, uh, I've gone through a lot of little uh, changes. Um, and it started out where I didn't want to. I um, lost my marriage and I uh, got sober. And um, the amazing um, spiritual awakening I had right in the early parts of my sobriety, what's well, almost six years ago, and the amazing changes. And when I've allowed, um, at that, mo I, at that moment, I knew I had that connection, that Jesus was right with me, right part of me, and was guiding everything. And I got some of the uh, moxie there <laughs> to um, you know, tell my, the ego, nah, and to, to, to um, follow. And um, so Many times of you know amazing high feeling is this feeling I'm in flow and everything is great and I've been learning a lot of things and then the Course in Miracles came to me um, three years ago and um, I pretty well right away um, connected with um, you know you guys and been out to the monastery in New Mexico and um, anyway. But I still have these periods of confusion, and that, and I say, you know, Jesus, what's going on? Help me. And um, at the monastery two years ago, you had us sit in meditation for a few hours, which at that time was, you know, really. Um, and we were going to get inspiration. <laughs> and I sat. I was waiting for this amazing inspiration to come to me. Here it's going to be. Wow. And all I got was just be. And at first I'm like, you're kidding, right? Just be. What does that even mean? That's two words. And so I, I realized, no, I guess I need to listen. That's what I'm really hearing in my mind. So I started drawing it and spent the rest of a few hours making a design out of it. And um, that became what I was, was doing um, or what I knew that I was supposed to be doing, just be. And what that meant, I didn't know, and it changed. But um, I've, I've, I've been hearing some things of I'm remembering I'm remembering when I was a little girl and I was not, I feel like I wasn't conditioned yet. I feel like I, re I remember just being. Um, and right now I'm single. I've been single for six years, five years, whatever. And um, I live by myself, except I have nine animals in the house with me. But, um, and I'm still, sometimes I'm wondering, well, maybe I'm supposed to do something more. So I sit again and I'm be still. Rest in God is what I kept getting yesterday. And um, so I guess, I mean, I, my mind was like, okay, well, just be was two years ago, and you should have worked that through, and you should know where you're going, and and uh, I'm still being told to be still, and to be still, and 
and um, be in touch with the I amness. Um, you know, Muji did a thing where, he, uh, uh, whatever it's called, um, I am. Leave off the the rest of it and just the I am. What is that I am? And I feel like maybe is that where I'm supposed to be just sitting quiet by myself, shut off everything outside. I mean, I pretty much have a secluded air, you know, life. Um, but rid all distractions and let them go and follow that or is that the distractions part of what I'm supposed to be doing um so you start getting confused with that stuff and I I, I have um you know Ricky coming in a couple weeks <laughs> and when she first said you know I'm gonna come I'm like oh I can't do that I don't know what to do I feel like I'm supposed to figure out what programs to have and um again <laughs> I was told no just relax. And I, I recognized that that was all fear and ego telling me, um, you know, what, that I was supposed to be driving the show, running, running the bus here. So I, now I'm really excited to have her, but I still have this little fear of I don't know what to do. Um, but I guess that's, you know, I'm still, my, 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 my question keeps going. Am I, is that normal to be, allowed to be just by myself and not reaching out and, and doing other things and and I don't know. So I'm just really grateful for you know the the undoing of the doer is a great topic and um, you know that 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 instruction of just being is very uncomfortable at times. So um, thank you. That's it. Beautiful. You know, it's, when you're speaking, it, it's reminding me that, that uh, the way it's gone in the parable of David and the way I've seen it gone in most everyone's lives is that we go through these periods and phases where there's like a clearing out that is coming. It's almost like we have to be cleared out and we have to start to loosen from certain things before the next thing can come in in the next phase. And, and with this Undoing the Doer retreat, I've been getting messages. I know a lot of us are. Svava never, never had received so many messages. <laughs> She's like, oh my gosh, I'm getting flooded with messages. Not just, hi, I mean, you know, can I have a friend request? These are like long ones. And, and when you were speaking, also you've been to the monastery. I, I was thinking of our friend Jan over in Holland, because he wrote me a very long Facebook message too, and it's very similar to your question, because it's almost like, kind of almost like, what's next? I'm, I'm really, I've been in this for a while now, it's been like a clearing, is this clearing to continue? I'm in some kind of a holding pattern, Ricky's coming, and, and yet, uh, as for Jan and, and Ellen, Ricky's coming over there too, to to uh, to Holland and Portugal, so she, she's kind of in both scenarios too. But I know for myself, I would have these periods where things would start to get from go from busy to calm, and things would just start to clear out and clear out and clear out. Almost if you were painting a room in your house or painting the garage, where where Jesus was like, I want you to go out there and I want you to clear your garage because you're going to paint it, the inside of it. And you get out there and you put the garage door up and you go, Jesus, do you know that this garage is quite cluttered? Uh, he's like, yes, I know that. That's why I'm having you clean it out first before you paint. It's not, you're not going to be able to paint it. Uh, it would take a miracle for you to paint it in that condition. And, and I think what you're describing and what Jan described too is things are starting, you know, to to slow down, things are, are stepping away. You know, you were like wanting some kind of huge inspiration there at the monastery and you've been floating with just be and kind of clearing your plate. And actually, this is very common. And the same with Jan, what you're doing is you're kind of going through a clearing the plate phase and then there, there's much that will come. Uh, just like we were saying with, with Sylvia, that there's much 
Emily was saying there's much on the way. Yeah. So don't try to do anything, but just try to just be there and watch and, and allow and, and feel that connection because uh, even in the I Need Do Nothing section in the Course it says, from this quiet place you will be sent on many busy doings. Isn't that a nice metaphor? From this quiet place in your mind you'll be sent on many busy doings. And there's that line in the Bible, for those who much is given, much will be required. And, and I think all of us in community have felt that, I've felt that for, for decades, like, wow, I just said yes to you Jesus and now you are going to really use this puppet <laughs> in, more, in more ways than I could even fathom. And he's like, that's right, you're mine now, <laughs> you gave it over, <laughs> I'm, I will move the strings and the puppet and I'll speak through the puppet and smile and laugh and hug and yeah, kind of like Arsenio Hall, let's get busy. <laughs> you know, we got, there's a lot. And that's the pathway of A Course in Miracles. It's not 10, 12 hours a day of meditation. It's actually of being done through, of holy encounters, of being spoken through, sung through, hugged through, you know, that, that's actually a path of giving yourself over in such a, a clear and unified way that you finally have a unified mind because you gave all the skills, abilities, resources over for one purpose and lo and behold it, it unifies your mind. So I know it's a bit disorienting for you and I know for you Jan too this is a time where things, things have fallen away and both of you have Ricky on the way <laughs> and Ricky will humbly uh, brighten up your lives. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. You just welcome Ricky and, and watch what happens. The sparks will fly in a good way. And, and also be content with that because I think there's a sense like if things fall away it's almost like there's a judgment like am I doing something wrong? Am I isolating? You know, you, you know how the ego is going to try to hammer. Just when you're following and clearing the plate doing what you're asked to do, the ego is going to just be hammering away, hammering and hammering, trying to say, you've got to do something more. You're just going to be left behind. You aren't doing enough. You know, it's always trying to say something's going wrong and yet, I know in my experience and I think for all of us, we've all had those clearing the plate experiences and it takes a lot of faith during those times because there is much coming and, and like Jan, my gosh, you know, you, you have so many skills that the Spirit can use and that's, I know that's the prayer of your heart, to just use, use it without any attachment of identity, without it being Jan. Use anything, anything that I have. And I, like with Jonas, like with the, the girls band, like with uh, uh, Raul, I mean, on this retreat alone, just this weekend, I'm just seeing a symphony of, of those that are being called in to make the most glorious med melody. You know how they say, make a joyful noise, noise for the Lord. You, you guys are all being brought together by Jesus. It's almost like an orchestra for Christ uh, that you all have skills and abilities, but together you make the most amazing melody and apart, you know, it's like wandering in the dust, you know, it's like, what, what's, what am I worth? But when you all come together like these harmonies, I just feel like God is glorified. I feel, I feel so much that you are part of this plan. I feel you're such an integral part and uh, it's just kind of interesting that you both would come to mine and Ricky's <laughs> heading your way, so she must be part of it too. But you can just welcome it. You don't have to kind of push it or try to rush it or think that anything has gone wrong, but just welcome it with all your heart and, and rejoice and be happy. It's mm, beautiful. <laughs> oh, we love you so much. We love you so much. I just keep hearing with, with everyone that comes up, like everyone's a miracle worker. Like every question that there is or whatever the issue is, it's just like miracle worker, miracle worker. It's like Jesus wants to use all of us. We all have these special functions and it's 
it's the way out. It's like that's the undoing of the doer. It's not doing nothing because the ego would maybe want the body to do nothing, but the mind's still very active in attack. <laughs> so this miracle working function is actually how the mind rests. That's how we do nothing. We're doing nothing because it is him that does it through us. So, yeah, it just feels so beautiful. Everybody on this retreat is a miracle worker. And it's like <laughs> so exciting. Yeah. Coming your way. Jan, you want to share anything? Go ahead, Jan. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Well, this was this was very helpful, actually. I'm I'm really in this in this phase of. Um, okay, Holy Spirit, I I I quit my job. I I, I lost a lot of social relationships. Uh, a lot of things are falling away. And now what? I'm waiting for the next phase. Or and um, yeah. Maybe I'm getting a little impatient, but <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm not the one that decides how fast it, this whole awakening process goes. So yeah, but this was very helpful. Thank you very much. This was a great retreat, actually. So yeah, yeah it's great, Jan, too, because I remember when you you were just pouring your heart out to me, you you brought up a real common thing, which is kind of like. Uh, you know, you have an opportunity to go to Portugal and, you know, with, with Ellen and, and that's where Ricky and Jenny and Greg are doing the retreat and everything. But you brought up your farmhouse, which I guess is where you are now with your, with your dog. And Diana loved it there. I remember she just had so much joy being there with you both and the animals and it was like a paradise. Uh, but you brought up the idea that that is, I think, something we need to talk about for everybody because you brought up the idea that 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 I am responsible for how my life goes and uh, never be dependent on uh, anybody else for your survival. Um, you, from the time you're born to the time you die, you have to take responsibility for being in charge of making sure that uh, Jan and your family are, are, are cared for. And, uh, you know, there's that part of the ego where it, it, it tries to get you to be dependent on other people and what you're talking about is a belief system almost to defend against uh, becoming dependent on handouts from the government, on handouts from other people. And uh, to the world, what you're describing is a very important thing. And, you know, it's self-reliance and self-responsibility. And uh, there came a time in my life too where, where I was certainly into that, and, and I was living very simply, but I was taking full responsibility for my surroundings and everything. And, and that's when Jesus spoke to me and said, that's not going to get you out of the dream either, uh, because it's still so much focused on the hero of the dream, making all the right moves, you know, having a nest egg, having property like you've done. Most people can relate exactly to what you're saying. like, and. And you had some thoughts of even selling your farm and your farmhouse, but then this thing, this old conditioning came in and started to hammer. Uh, like, oh, well, then I'll never have be able to attain this again. In, in today's world, if you, if you sell up the chances of the way the world's going of, of ever having a farmhouse in Holland again, that's just kiss it goodbye. And then that feeling of almost like, well, if I'm down there in Ellen's house and, you know, almost that dependency thing that this whole bravado, I, I, will, I will provide for myself is a defense against the dependency. And when I asked Jesus about that, because I, I was quite good at it too, you know, at taking care of the body of David and, and being very, very self-reliant, like Henry David Thoreau, extremely self-reliant. Jesus said, no, you're going to have to learn God dependence. You're going to have to let me take care of you if you serve me. I will provide for you. And that is not in our conditioning. Nobody, uh, in, even in my Christian family, nobody at the, at the kitchen table was saying, don't be so concerned about business and education and all these things. 
uh, because God will just take care of you. Uh, just follow God's will and God will take care of you. Not even in a Christian uh, family did we hear that. That was just this radical stuff from the Bible about take no thought for tomorrow and look at the lilies of the field, and how, they, how they neither spin nor toil and how they're provided for better than the clothing of Solomon. And I mean, all that stuff that we read in the Bible, they're like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. That was 2,000 years ago. That's for Jesus. Buddy, you get a good education, <laughs> earn your keep, get your possessions and uh, have a nice nest egg and you'll be a responsible human being and let Jesus be Jesus and you be you. When actually uh, there is an element of trust that if you go into your miracle working function, Jesus is saying, if, you, if you'll do my work for me, I will handle, I will arrange time and space for the miracle worker. So whereas Emily is saying, I'm hearing the call of miracle workers, like miracle workers rise up, like now your time has come, and some of you are, like you, are in a holding pattern, uh, kind of a clearing it away. These are the very things in your mind that have to be faced, because all of us who live in community know that as well, that, you know, we all come together and we trust that everything is provided, and we wouldn't even be able to do these broadcasts in a, in a house like this, with cameras like this, with all these beloved people around me in the studio that are here devoting their lives to it. Uh, I don't know, do you have a farm? Do you have a farm? Do you have a farm? Lilo, do you have a farm? Belgium? No? Do you have a farm? Soren? Do you have a farm? Nope. Linda? No. I'm around a bunch of happy people that don't have a farm. Uh, so they don't have chores to deal with. They love puppy dogs like that too. Yeah, though they love the puppy dogs. And Benito and, and Zion. And, we have uh, them. We, we have lots of that. We have a lot of cuddles with things. But they don't have the weight of the farm. So there's an old saying about selling the farm. <laughs> you know, there's something underneath it, but you, it has to be something that's guided to the point where you feel a huge inspiration welling up and you feel like you're so willing, you have so many skills and abilities. You are such an amazing musician. You have such a, an amazing, wow, if people could just see inside of your consciousness the the devotion and the love that you've put into music, you know, you're like, uh, what's that movie, Oklahoma, where it was the music man that was in that? You're like the music man. You're Jan, the music man. And Jesus has, has a purpose for that. And I could just hear Jesus saying right now, don't worry about the farm. Like, you've done so well. You have done so well. And you've been so giving and so loving. But he still has more for you in this plan. And, and I know that's where your heart is. It reminds me of Judy Scutch's husband too. I remember I was sitting there one time with, with Wit, and he was probably around 90 years old, and she's there, and she and Tamara, her daughter, went off to cook in the kitchen, and he was sitting there with my friend Gia, and uh, all of a sudden he told me that parable of how he was diagnosed with cancer and he had one whim was to go over and meet Mao Zedong and uh, to go to China because he was an ambassador to China kind of for the United Nations and, and he had that whim. So after he was diagnosed with cancer and it kind of moved along a bit, he went over, he got invited to China. The day that he was going to meet Mao, Mao Zedong, Chairman Mao, Mao died and he, he sent me a photograph of him at Mao's casket. And uh, there's Wit, Judy Scutch's husband, standing right next to, and there's Mao in the, Chairman Mao is in the, uh, in the casket. And I said to him, well, you, you did get to meet Mao finally. It's, you know, it was kind of close there, but you know, you got to meet him. And he said, yeah, and I got to go to China. And, I, and then they had a whole delegation of Americans, but when Mao died, the Chinese didn't know what to do. So this whole delegation of American officials, you know, he was from Washington, D.C. with all these other delegates, 
The Chinese didn't know what to do. Everybody was confused. So they sent all of the American delegates off to Mongolia in the winter and they just dumped them on the streets because the Chinese didn't know what to do with American delegates because they were supposed to meet Mao and Mao's dead. So they just decided instead of just sending him back home, they put him. So he's on the streets. He's got cancer. He's, he's cold. He has nothing to eat. He's on the streets of Mongolia or somewhere out there in the winter. And I said, what did you do? And he said, I just prayed. And I said, Jesus, thank you. I've had such a great life. You even let me come over and see Mao. You let me come here. And he said, I'm so happy and you've given me such an amazing, miraculous life. I just want to thank you with all my heart and I love you so dearly and I've, I've loved following you and I've loved devoting my life to you and everything. And then he said, oh, and by the way, if there's anything else I can do for you, Jesus, I'm your man. Well, Jesus pulled him off the streets of Mongolia, brought him back to, to be the husband of Judy Scutch, and he was in charge of translations for decades, for another couple, two and two and a half decades or more, and he oversaw all the translations of the course into like, now there's 20, 27 languages, I think. All came from one little tail end of a prayer. Oh, and by the way, Jesus, if there's anything I can do for you, I'm your man. And Jesus used him He's one of the most integrous, loving, anybody who met with this just integrity and love poured through him. He was so good. So really that's all you're doing is you're just in a holding pattern there where things are getting kind of cleared out a little bit for the next step. And you're doing a great job of that. Jesus is like saying, well done, Jan, you've well done. And I still have something for you. And all you have to do is say, oh, and by the way, <laughs> I'm your man. <laughs> and that's all you have to do. Literally nothing else. Everything else will be orchestrated. Absolutely everything else, including Ricky coming. He's sending in Ricky <laughs> and Jenny and Greg. So you can just relax there because uh, you've done a great job and, and uh, I, there is more to come, but you don't have to worry. Uh, it will be shown to you. It will be made obvious. Yeah, I would love to share something too because it's been coming in my mind over and over allowance that this period is just so important as well um, I, re I recognize it for myself hearing just be still nothing coming but that is has been my practice to when my mind goes into oh I have to do this or this I should should the should and would uh, sh should be doing then is the practice of no, no, just come back, come back, come back. Just allowance, because this is so important to allow yourself to just fall back to being. Yeah, just to be. And it's okay, it's important. This is, this is what is given from Jesus to you right now, to allow yourself to rest and to be. Yeah, thank you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is uh, Peter Smith. Go ahead, Peter. Sorry. I'm just, I, can you hear me? Yes. Sorry about that. Um, I just had a call come in and I've lost the picture, but you can hear me, so I'll just speak. Yeah? Um, Just, uh, it's been um, a very powerful weekend for me. Um, it's the fifth one I've done in a row, and each time my heart's been opening more and more, breaking open, really. And, um, but it's also bring, been bringing up a lot of unworthiness, a lot of, so I'm just sitting here in this session, 
just incredibly, I'm very, both I can feel the unworthiness, but I can also feel uh, the love here. I, I just, I just feel um, tremendous uh, inspired one moment by the courage and honesty of all the sharing. And the next moment I'm feeling uh, overwhelmed and feeling very inadequate. And uh, it was just like I'm sitting two feet from the screen. And when there's just you on the screen, David, it's like, you're two feet away from me, and it's like, whoa, this is very intimate. <laughs> and um, and it's been okay, just about. <laughs> and um, so, what what came up on the retreat at one point was. Um, I'm, I'm unworthy to receive guidance. I'm unworthy to receive love. I mean, I guess that's always at the core what we're unworthy, think we're unworthy of. But I could see that was um, an obvious obstacle, <laughs> that belief for receiving guidance. Um, and it does feel I've been listening to others often this this place in um, limbo kind of waiting and I've heard it in many of the retreats and I've felt like that for a long time but I I can see I really needed to open to this place of um, it's not new to me but it's it's like I have chosen to face this place of unworthiness, even though I have fear about it. Um, it, it's, um, This place has been around a long time, but it's it's mostly just in the background as an irritation. And, um, and my mind has, I don't think it's just unworthiness, I think it's rage and self-hatred. Feels like a lot of childhood trauma but it feels I'm excited about it, but I'm also um, hesit very hesitant. So when Jason's asking me to put my hand up, I put it up very halfway. Um, so I'm still hesitant, but it feels right. And um, It's helpful not really being able to see anybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. no. Your face, we see your sincere face and it's beaming to all of us so clear. And, and I, I just feel such gratitude for you, Peter, because I know you're over there in England. You have your, maybe your course group and your circle like many people do. But, but this is a, a very intimate uh, setting, even though it seems to be like a digital setting with the faces so so close, you know, we can see your face and we can see every movement and and it's very very intimate form of communication even to sit across somebody uh, and speak the what we're all speaking of. And I think what I have heard is what you what you're sharing is what Emily mentioned too with Sylvia, this we just feel so honored by your courage and by your willingness to to speak um, 
we all know that too from our intimate relationships. You know how sometimes the mind wants to hold back and say some things and not say everything, you know, like a partial communication. That's part of the human condition. But I feel like what Jesus is calling us to is, is a really full communication where we can be courageous enough to say whatever. And we've had so many great people, like you said, authentic expressions of just cracking open, even when they're not feeling good, even when they feel stuck or whatever. And then the, that is so helpful. And so I think it's like our holy relationship is like a container, a safe container where people can feel to let up what needs to be let up because they've been wearing the mask uh, for so many years and just they haven't let their full self come through because of fear of rejection maybe, fear of abandonment, typical things. But I, I feel like just your presence with us on these online retreats, I, I mean I feel it. It's a very strong, sincere presence of of coming with your willingness and and showing up and and daring to be transparent. And your example is an example for everyone. It just helps make it that much easier for everyone that's p participating to do the very same thing. And even when we have people come to a retreat for a weekend or a week or a month or whatever, that's what's going on, you know, we have, we're practicing transparency uh, because we know that the more transparent and honest we can be, the more that we can tune into that guidance. That's what the guidance wants for us. It wants integrity. It wants communication. And finally, it wants the atonement and, and the holy instant. And, and Jesus does say in the text, that if you would know the holy instant, if you would experience the holy instant, you must want full communication with everything and everyone. And I feel that's where your heart is. You do want that full communication. You don't want to have any hidden parts that have to be hidden behind a mask. It's not comfortable holding up a mask, and none of us have felt comfortable in the human condition holding up a mask, but and you're just, we, I feel you're very determined to, to be very sincere and authentic. And, and so, just from the bottom of my heart, I thank you and I know all of us, this is what we deal with on a daily basis. This is what we're practicing with each other and also what we're encouraging with everyone we meet. And we don't just practice with our community, we practice with our, with those, as a housekeeper or a cleaner, people we meet on the street, the interactions we have when we're buying groceries with the, the beautiful Mexican people, the friendly people that are sometimes so transparent and so friendly and open that they're like the way showers. Down here in Mexico we are surrounded by a bunch of happy people that don't really have much awareness of time. You know, you take something in to get it fixed or whatever and they go, oh yeah, when will it be done? A manana manana. That manana manana means not now. <laughs> that's, that's all they're saying. Like, I'm here with you right now in the joy and manana manana to whatever you're asking. And we learn from that. We actually are, are receiving the blessing of that state of mind, which is so different from our more kind of industrialized Western, you know, go, 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 achieve, accumulate, accomplish, you know. It's, it's really a, a blessing. So, yeah, what a, what a gift it is to, uh, to just see your, your face. And maybe you can't see us, but wow, we sure can see you and hear you. We see that smile beaming all over the whole, the whole planet. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Feel your heart. Mm. Uh, okay, and up next is uh, Richard Hahn. Go ahead, Richard. Richard. Oh. <laughs> um, oh, I'm unmuted. Okay, you can hear me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I kind of got surprised there. <laughs> um, okay, I guess, yeah, I have a question about um, miracles and 
Um, well, okay, I'll tell you what just happened recently. Recently, I did a course um, with Lisa, a ministerial training course, and I didn't graduate from the course this year. So I had a lot of guilt about that. And, um, and during the, um, we each had 10 minutes to close. She still invited me to be part of the graduation. And, um, while I, as I started talking, I think a minute in, I started to let everybody know I'm not graduating. I didn't finish the requirements and, and then poof, there was a miracle and everything was lifted and all the thoughts were lifted and there was nothing like I could, I could, it was like I could see the remnants of the thoughts, but they had no meaning and no weight. And, and suddenly I was feeling light and I was smiling and it was just, yeah, it was like, it was the miracle that I have in my mind. Like I want to have these miracles where it's like the angels are singing and it's like the heavens, you know, and, and, oh, and, uh, so I just kind of have a question about that because sometimes, sometimes that kind of experience feels really elusive. And, um, and I like, you know, it's, I mean, when that happens, it's like, yes, more of that, please. I want to have more of that. But then I'm not sure, is, is there, is there to, something to watch for? Like, is there, uh, like, I don't want to have, am I getting attached to the form? I guess that's my question. Is, is there an attachment to the form? And because I, the experience was so great, it's like, yeah, I would love to have that happen every day. Um, but is that the ego getting in there? and going oh yeah yeah that's how it needs to be so that's my question yeah following to be a miracle worker i th i see that that's what it is it's like because that's what the prayer is you're asking i don't want this to be elusive can can i have this be m more consistent can i can i have live in that state of mind and yeah i don't know if anybody else on the panel wants to address that because that's I, I know that's the prayer of the heart for everybody. Everybody is, is feeling that, wanting that. Yeah. Yeah, as you were you're speaking, Richard, I just actually heard David in my mind with let each day be devoted to miracles and the way that you can do that is just by tuning into your feelings and whenever you're feeling a contraction, that's really your opportunity to drop in and ask Jesus for the miracle. And then that experience can be given to you. And it doesn't necessarily need to look like the, the graduation ceremony you were in. It can, can look like anything at all. It can look like you just sitting and praying and then boom, your whole mind lights up. But yeah, I just really heard again, the seems like the prevailing theme for our whole retreat is just guidance. Like, what is it that you would have me do? And just being so, so present with the way that you feel all the time. Beautiful. Okay, next is uh, Joni. Go ahead, Joni. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, for me, it's the first time. You hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. For me, it's the first time uh, I'm going to speak. Uh, wow, I didn't es es expect this. Um, so... I'm so shocked in this moment that I don't know of if I have a question or I have to share with you. Um, I'm very grateful for the uh, what you are doing because um, in this moment um, I can't leave my home to go to retreats and that kind of stuff. This I have to go do everything uh, at home because um, in 2016 yes I uh, my body get ill from an um, um, a right top how does it go how do you call it uh, muscle disease and uh, I really don't know if I will the body will completely uh, uh, heal. Uh, I have problems uh, with, uh, uh, I can't walk long, I can't stand long, and I have troubles with feeling 
I don't know how you call it. When you have sleeping legs, that kind of feeling I have in my in my legs. In, and um, but the say, but I'm also so glad that I um, uh, find you on YouTube when I was in the uh, in the clinic to uh, recover because I have I was in a wheelchair. I was I can't do anything more i can't can't even make my own bread and i i couldn't walk i i was a big baby and of course i'm very grateful that i'm now uh, at home and uh, i have helped to clean the my house uh, but most of the things i can do self i can do my groceries it's not so far from here, and I walk with a walker. But sometimes I, I think it's the ego that wants to know: Will I recover completely uh, and can do uh, what I I was used to? Because when I don't uh, have this. Yeah, I really want to go to a retreat or or mystical mind training and that kind of stuff. But this is what I do, and I'm I'm very grateful that you are offering this kind of stuff, so I can do a lot at home. And and in my neighborhood, I don't have the people to. I don't have mind companions here, so I have to do all of this. In this way, so I don't know what the question is, but I also have a lot of insights. I know that that uh, the ego is telling me uh, you can't do it and that kind of stuff. And now I'm uh, training myself not not to to listen to that voice that always is telling me I'm not good enough i'm not i'm stupid i don't feel the love yet and i like to go to to listen to, most of the times jason i uh follow your uh the uh, uh in the in the morning and and i'm uh yeah i learn a lot of you folks all of you you are so, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. I'm actually glad you mentioned my name because my heart was, I could feel like I really wanted to speak to this because there was um, only two words that I read with all these questions this morning that really stood out and it was actually Sabine's, which she wrote, I, um, I know that in reality there's no death, no body and no death. And yet I'm aging and a less performant body is still an issue for me. Sometimes there's also this feeling of being useless and no longer belonging to groups. The other issue I'm still concerned with is the issue of unworthiness and stupidity. I discovered that most people more or less are having this issue. And so when you were saying those words, I was just thinking my friend Calico actually is going to be doing this. Um, I forget the title of it, but a, sick, a sickness retreat. It's <laughs> Not to make you sick. What is it, Dave? Rethinking sickness. Rethinking sickness, yeah. And, and it's, it's totally meant for somebody like you who is in this position where, where I feel actually maybe the ego set up the conditions, but the Holy Spirit can use it because, yeah, so much of us are used to, you know, becoming intellectual or succeeding in the world or doing a great job to avoid this deep feeling of stupidity and unworthiness. And when then these things come in like, like a sickness, it, like, it puts a check and a balance almost on that, that part of the mind if we want to use it right and say, wait a minute, I do need to be dependent on something else other than my intellect and my... <sighs> I guess the message is always for oneself. <laughs> you know, on this, on competency. And so... Because, yeah, I mean, some of you may know I had that surgery a while back and still there's a temptation to think that there's a, a pain there, but, but I'm using it as an inroads 
to exactly what it is you're doing. Like, I'm not a body. Where is my miracle working? Where is a total unidentification with the body as my only solution? You know, there's nothing that can be fixed or saved in the world of form, including the body. The mind that thought the body was sick is sick. So it's like, whoa, that, talk about needing a transcendent solution from trying to resolve anything in the world and miracle working and, and speaking and getting online retreats and joining with your brothers. If those are the only solution, then perhaps the, thing, the very thing that you're going through that could be viewed as a curse is the very thing that can accelerate a very deep awakening. So, yeah, I'm just grateful you poured it out and I got to meet you here. Online, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. Wow. That's like a benediction. That's a blessing for all of us. Ending our beautiful retreat on that thought that everything that seems to be happening is, is all be going to be used by the Spirit. And... Uh, yeah, recently I was talking to Svava and she, I think maybe it was yesterday you were saying that was like a huge realization that everything that seemed to be going wrong or a struggle was actually your pathway to awakening. Yeah. Instead of judging against it, now it suddenly it turned like you were going to pay close attention and welcome everything that came knowing that that was part of your pathway. Yeah, exactly. You know, every time the every time you feel you're getting attacked or any like fear coming up, this is going towards everything that feels fearful. That is the way to wake up. Not avoiding anything. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big insight. <laughs> yeah. That is given. That is that is the gift. You know, seeing, oh wow, I believe this. I believe this. Okay, go towards that and and have it give it over, have it healed. Yeah. Because the ego wants you to run away from everything. Everything that is gonna wake you up. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh well. Well, from all of us, from the bottom of our hearts, we, we cherish this. We are so, so grateful that we can have these opportunities to come together and be transparent. You know, I love it. I mean, I love all the contributions, all the miracles that were shared and, and all the insights, all the guidances that you heard when Jason made the prayer and, and giving us an opportunity to cheer you on with that guidance and uh, and everything even you know it's like it's actually a gift even when you have frustration or doubt or anger coming up I, again John Wetzel that was so beautiful how when Jason made the prayer you had that anger coming up and then you know you firmly said I'm going at my own pace and and uh, and that's beautiful too you you are, we are, all of us are going at our own pace. And we have to remember that, you know, that there's things wouldn't be better if they were different. There's not somebody behind us pushing us saying, go faster. There's nothing behind us pushing us saying, you got to rush, you know. There's nothing behind us pushing us saying, you should be farther along. That's, that's not the reality of it. We're going at our pace and I just feel such overwhelming love for all of your willingness and, and, and the little willingness, you know, that, that was talked about too, the, you know, to nurture that along, to nurture that spark. We're here to do that. And I think we're doing a pretty good job of nurturing that spark, you know? I really feel it. I really feel it. So it's, I guess we're to that point again where it's, we're, we're shifting to the next thing, and, and uh, Jeff, we actually have our, uh, our title for the next month, which I, I really like, and I like the banner. We had a template, but Pete here, uh, there he is, Pete, Pete helped design that, and I was like looking at that for like five minutes, ooh, you want to share? Yeah, it's called, uh, it's perfect actually, it's, it, 
it's called stepping into magnitude, embracing your life's purpose. And it's really, it just feels like the next phase. So um, I was just reveling actually in what you're sharing, David, about um, painting the garage, like clear it all out, like clear the way for what's new and what's fresh and what's new and fresh feels like stepping into magnitude and embracing your life's purpose with your whole heart, like really fully taking something on. So it just pulls you through that knot hole, through that keyhole. So um, embracing your life's purpose and stepping into magnitude. February. Yeah. And then I, I see Carly's face, where once I was dead, now I am alive. She is resurrected. We're, we, we need that smiling face. We can't, we can't go on without it. We need that. So it's beautiful. I see it there. Yeah. And it just, that's a good, powerful witness to you, even in the depths of darkness, when it feels so dark and you feel so closed, all you did was like shoot up your flare, your little flare gun, like, I'm down here in a hole, but I'm going to send off the flare, and there you are. Uh, and somebody told me, you're just, there's Carly again, she's sharing her messages on Facebook, she's back. So, you know, that's what we do these things for. <laughs> oh, sweet. Very, very sweet. Yeah, the, maybe we'll have the whole uh, team here come, come on, if we can do a wide angle. Behind the scenes. <laughs> the whole team. <laughs> yeah, because it takes, it takes a village for us to put on these, <laughs> these weekend retreats. And Jason's up there at Camus. Maybe Jason, you can have... Uh, is it Jeffrey? Whoever's in there behind it. Let everybody come oh, up. Oh, everyone's waving. To in front. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Here, we'll see you. Aww. Aww. Sweet. There we are. <laughs> We're a global team. Aww. Aww. <laughs> this may be the last online retreat for you, Jason, in the old, the old studio. You're ready to move into a little more spaciousness. <laughs> oh. I was saying to these guys, I'd like to have a retreat one month, too, where we help everyone find even their special function. So, I don't know how, we need the whole community, 40 people involved in that one. <laughs> <laughs> for one-on-ones or something, but a special function <laughs> retreat. I like it. Yeah, yeah. that's good. <laughs> Everyone, get into the miracle-working function. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs>